Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do an underpainting with your colored pencils. So this tulip was a live stream here on YouTube, so I will go ahead and link that down below if you guys wanna watch this video all in real time. But right now I'm working on the stem and I'm making sure that I put down enough colored pencil because I like to blend my colored pencils out with OMS, which is odorless mineral spirits. And what that means is I can just lay down some light layers with the colored pencils. I don't have to push very hard at all to build up the layers. And then once I blend out with that OMS, it sort of just pushes the pigment of the colored pencils into the tooth of paper, but it doesn't ruin the tooth of the paper. So I can keep going on top and creating more layers and creating more depth. So that's what you're seeing here. This is just the first layer for the stem. And now I'm just using a Taclone bristle brush and um, some OMS and I'm just dabbing it off onto some paper towel there and that's how I blend it out. So once you put that OMS down, you gotta give it a good 20 minutes or so for it to dry completely. So we're just moving on to the rest of the flower. And now I'm using this yellow color for the base part of the flower. And I really liked the highlights and the darks in this flower, but I'm gonna make mine just slightly a little more purple tinged than what the reference photo is. It's a little more pinky and I want mine to be like a purpley magenta color. So I'm keeping that in mind as I'm choosing my colors. But of course, for any of these tutorials, you guys can choose whatever colors that you want. Um, color doesn't really matter as much as your lights and darks do. That's what's gonna make your um, work look more realistic. So are you getting your darks dark enough and your lights light enough? But as I'm going here, I'm keeping in mind that I want these layers to be pretty light because I'm gonna blend them out. And then I'll have another video showing you how I go on top of this first layer and create the details. So I've sort of developed a system that works for me and I usually do a two layer method with my colored pencil. So I'll put down my base layer, what I'm doing here, blend it out with my OMS, and then I go on top with my details just to really create the look that I'm going for, really to bump up my brights and get my darks good enough. But this is sort of my base process. So while I'm doing these first layers, I like to get some of my darks in first, which is sort of in my stem. And then I wanna get some of my lightest colors in. And as you can see, the light areas on the flower, I'm really trying to preserve those areas because especially with colored pencils, it's really hard to get those light areas back once you've gone over them, unless you're gonna use your Touch Up Texture and Titanium White, which is from Brush and Pe Pencil. And that is gonna be your most opaque white that is archival and is made to go on top of colored pencils. But most artists that I see don't use that. So I try not to use it unless I really have to. So I'm really focusing on being able to save my white areas here or my lightest areas because not all light areas are just white. Now I'm going in with a magenta color and I believe this is magenta from Prismacolor and this is one of my favorite colors. And I'm using this to start blocking in some of those darker areas. And I'm keeping in mind as I'm using this pencil, even though these are my base layers, I still wanna have my strokes go in the direction of the work. So these are petals. And if you look closely at the petals, all the strokes or the lines within the petals sort of go in a similar direction or they're curving a similar way. So I wanna keep in mind as I'm laying these base layers down that I'm going in that same direction so that even if all my strokes don't blend out completely with the OMS, that's okay because it's just gonna look like I've added more detail or I've added these strokes in when I intended to have them blend out a little bit more because I'll go in and add that detail in the next layer but it's okay if you do get some of that texture because it just adds to the look of your piece at the end. And if you wanted to get rid of that texture completely altogether, then you would just keep layering up. So you would do another layer just like this, blend it out, do another layer, and until you're happy with how smooth it is, and the really nice thing with the OMS is you can almost do an infinite amount of layers because I'm really not pushing hard for any of this. So this is all just one layer, I'm doing a light, light to medium pressure at most and i'm just letting you know the the weight of the pencil really do the work so as you can see i'm starting to build up some of those darks and i'm using mostly the magenta from prismacolor and the magenta from polychromos now the magenta from polychromos is also another one of my favorite colors but it leans a little bit more purple 
So I'm being strategic where I'm putting that because I don't want to cover all of the magenta color from Prismacolor because I want some of that bright, you know, pinky magenta color to come through. But I do want to have my shadow areas lean just a little bit more purple. So I'm keeping that in mind. And, and this piece was done on an 8x10 Strathmore hot pressed paper. And this is becoming one of a favorite papers for me. So usually I'm an Arches cold pressed or hot pressed paper girl. So if I'm using watercolors, I like the cold pressed. If I was using the colored pencils like this, I usually lean to Arches hot pressed. But there's just something about this Strathmore hot pressed paper. It is a really nice paper and it takes layering almost as well as arches and maybe a little bit better. And you're just seeing me come with the Prismacolor white pencil here. And what I'm doing is just going over all of the light areas. Because I want to blend out with the OMS, I need to make sure I have enough layers on the paper so that the OMS will blend the pencil out smoothly. So even where I didn't have any pencil on the paper, I wouldn't get a nice smooth transition between the lighter areas and where I've got pencil. So I actually take that Prismacolor white pencil and I just go over those light areas and transition them into the areas where I've got colored pencil so that I don't get this harsh line where there's pencil and no pencil as it blends out. And as you can see, it just creates a really nice, smooth, like beautiful transition um, between those areas, that highlight area and the colored pencil areas. Now this looks a little brighter and more vibrant because the OMS will darken the colors a little bit. So as you'll see in the next video of this, um, it will be a little bit more dulled down because as it dries, it will get a little bit less vibrant. Um, so just keep that in mind. As you start blending it with the OMS, you might think, oh, this is really like vibrant. And it does darken the colors a little bit, but it will dry a little less saturated than this and um, the white areas will come back a little bit more white. So just keep that in mind. And I really love these Taclon bristle brushes to blending out the OMS. And what I do with first layer like this, you can use a little bit more OMS than you would for your second layers. So every layer that I do, I do a little bit more OMS. So I'll make sure I dab off a little bit extra off my brush because the more pencil and layers that you have on your paper, the more the OMS could actually lift the colored pencil up off the paper. So you want to make sure if you have lots of pencil down or even if you build up a lot of layers before you even blend it out that first time, you want to make sure that you're taking a lot of that OMS off your brush. Otherwise, it will sort of smudge it around. And I find Prismacolor pencils smudge around a little bit more than the Polychromos. So that's why I sort of like to mix the two together because I get a happy medium of like translucent versus opaque with the Prismacolor and I find it's just a really nice combo. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial and I will come back with a part two of this and I'll show you how I layer up to get that extra detail and to really make this piece pop. So make sure you go ahead and like the video if you want to see that. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I post my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always I will see you in the next one. Bye!